Um, chain of custody is, um, and this is something else you, you may have to deal with in your professional careers. Chain of custody is probably, apart from actually gathering the evidence itself, it's probably the second most important aspect in criminal law and stuff that you guys may have to deal with if you're doing things like rape kits or if you're um, you know, doing other types of examination, creating medical records. Um, chain of custody is how an object, how a piece of evidence has, has traveled from the crime scene to the time it ends up in court. And you have to have an unbroken chain of custody in order for something to be admissible because you have to prove that an item is what you purport it to be. So if you find a bullet at a crime scene, the crime scene technician is going to take a photograph of that bullet in place. They're going to take the bullet with a little marker that shows the evidence number. They're going to take a picture of that. They're going to take that bullet, they're going to put it in some type of container and mark it as evidence and tag it with the same tag that was in the picture. And they're going to send them, they're going to take a picture of it without the bullet there. And they're going to take that little container and they're going to send it up to the forensics lab. The forensics lab is going to open it and they're going to examine it. Every step along the way, somebody, there's a form and people got to sign off on this form. I picked it up at the crime scene and I put it in the bag and then I sent it to the forensics lab. And then the forensics lab gets it and they fill it out and say, on this date, I opened it and I examined it and then I put it back in the container and I put it back in the bag because everything is sealed and you know with the tape that you're not supposed to break, it gets broken all the time. But every step of the way, so then from the lab it's going to go to maybe back to the police department and then maybe it goes to the state's attorney's office. But every step in that chain from the time it gets picked up at a crime scene to the time it's um, admitted into court, it has to be unbroken because if you can show that there's some break in the chain. Somebody handed it off to somebody else and they didn't sign for it or they didn't do what they said they did in that log, that evidence is admissible. And you gotta have a little hearing for it. It's not just like poof, it goes away. But usually you file a motion to exclude and you you know prepare all your case law and your arguments for the judge and the two sides go in front of the judge and you say this shouldn't be in because the chain of custody is broken and you can't authenticate that it's the bolt that came from the crime scene, then it shouldn't go in. Um, and if you, can, if you can really show that chain of custody was broken, somehow you can usually preclude some evidence from, from getting in. Um, so that's after, so when you do stuff like, you know, like the rape test kits, for example, you're going to have to sign off on little forms when you do these things. They always come with little checklists and, and signature cards and stuff like that. You're going to have to take these kits and put them all back together once you've taken the samples you need to take. And you're going to hand it off to the police, and you're going to be the, you're going to be like the first person in that particular chain of custody, because you're the one taking the actual sample from the woman who's been victimized. So you're going to be the first one on there. You're going to be called into court, and you're going to sit up on the stand. You're going to get sworn in, and you're going to sit up on the stand, and someone's going to sit there and say, you know, what's your name? Where do you work? What do you do there? Were you there on this night? Do you remember this woman? Did you examine this woman? Did you take this sample from her? Did you put it in this box? Did you seal this box? Did you then hand this box to this police officer? And you'll say yes, you know, at that point. Then they're going to bring the police officer on, and they're going to question the police officer. Did you take this sample from this woman, you know, we just talked to at the hospital? And he'll say yes. Then what did you do with it? And they'll go through that chain of custody for every single person that's handled that piece of evidence to the point where he's going to say, I gave it to the state's attorney, and it's sitting there on the desk for trial. Um, so that's another thing you've got to be aware of as you get out there. You're going to be asked to do certain things. Um, you know, certain things like chain of custody and making sure that things can be authenticated as to what they are, you may have to play a part in that at some point down the road.